I have a situation where I have traffic that is Microsoft traffic that is not matching to the rule I expect. Um, also, I have in this scenario created a URL category. You can see name Microsoft.com. But if I watch the session IDs for some of this traffic, I notice that not all of the traffic involves that URL. And so what I want to do is a more I want to have a more accurate way of identifying traffic to Microsoft uh, and then let that always match my traffic, or at least as often as possible, more so than I currently have. So the way I'm going to do this is I've got a URL filter uh, up here for URL contains, and I just put Microsoft. I should actually be a little more thorough here and put .com slash because anyone could do, you know, invoke the name Microsoft in a URL. Um, like Microsoft.malware.com, for example. And if I don't specify the .com slash, it would match things that I don't intend for it to match. So I got this filter string like this. I want to put some additional safeguard material around what I'm about to do. And so there may be certain countries where I only want to do this and other countries where I might not, right? Uh, and then I could even do it based on like source region, essentially source subnet, uh, and then I could even you know be specific with um, groups of users, devices, etc. But I'm going to leave it at this plus. I'm also going to invoke the category of low risk, right? So it's a low risk Microsoft URL in the United States. So I've got these filter criteria here that I'm going to just highlight. Next thing I want to do is move over and edit my log forwarding profile. But before I do that, notice where I just was. I was up in the address group section and I've created an address group already called MSFT servers. Uh, this matches a tag that I pre-created, MSFT server. You don't have to do it in this order, but I did because this is a pre-existing setup. And I think it greatly simplifies if you do the uh, tag creation first. You don't have to create the dynamic address group yet, but you can do it uh, beforehand if you want. Next, you go into your log forwarding profile. Now, I have just one that I've created. This one is predefined. I use one called default. And inside of this profile, you can see I've got many rules. Uh, several of them are focused on log forwarding. However, I'm going to use a, a new rule that is not going to be involved in log forwarding whatsoever. I'm going to use it for auto tagging. So I'm just going to call this Microsoft.com server. And I started this journey in the URL filtering log and I created a URL filtering log filter. So I want to look in the URL filtering log and I want to paste that filter string that I'd copied earlier into this filter field here. And the reason I want to start with this is because I pre-validated in the log that that filter string captures uh, data that's going to be useful for me, right? Next I want to do is come down to built-in actions and I'm going to call this uh, tag-msft-server and I am really focused on the destination address, not the source address. I want to add a tag. You can give it a timeout. I really like the idea of a timeout because some service providers like Microsoft might use a, a content delivery network and those IP addresses are shared across many of their customers. And so you can't trust that it it's always going to represent Microsoft traffic. So if you don't put a timeout on. If that address is used for something else, it's misattribution. So I give it a timeout, but depending on the ownership of the, the services in question and uh, who, how often you suspect those addresses might change, you might opt to never have a timeout. Uh, next, I was going to add my tag, which I know to be msft-server. And see why it's nice to have pre-created the tag. I don't have to memorize the exact syntax. Uh, start typing it and it pops down just like that. So I've got this created. What it'll do is it'll tag the destination address uh, as Microsoft MSFT server for any destination IPs that match this filter string from the log. So I can click OK. I can click OK. 
And then I can come back up to address groups and I can create a new address group. And the important thing when you're gonna do this is you choose a type of dynamic and then you add some criteria and this criteria would be your tag. Uh, you can scroll through the list and hit this little plus and, and you've just done it. That's all you really need to do. If you wanna add the color, you add that same tag down here. And so you can see in my example, I've done just that. It's a dynamic address group, which we call a DAG or DAG. And then I've got my, my tag here. Uh, once you've committed this and let some traffic run through it for a little while, you can click on this more option and you can see that this uh, uh, group contains really right now just a single IP. I could unregister it if it's the wrong IP and that could be value in using a non timeout uh, tag action. And then you can have other tags that remove, or sorry, uh, other log forwarding actions that remove tags if you needed to. Um, and then I've actually got a bit of a circular reference with two groups referring back to each other. It doesn't matter as far as I can tell so far. So I'm gonna click close. And then I will use this MSFT server in my policies somewhere. And if I've already got anything focused on Microsoft, so this is Microsoft CDN traffic, I'm gonna change this because I know now Microsoft servers is more specific to um, the anything Microsoft.com, whereas the update servers was a different dynamic address group that was uh, targeted. And, and forget that they're circularly referring to each other. I'll fix that in just a second. So now I want to have two rules. So I'm gonna go back to that MS uh, CDN traffic. I'm gonna add a new rule. And I could clone it, actually I'm gonna clone it just because it makes the rest of the rule creation easier. And then I'm just gonna call this Microsoft.com server traffic. Like this. I'll just say servers. Uh, so the source could be any of my internal. Uh, it's definitely outside and I'm gonna change this to the MSFT dynamic address group and then I'll remove that circular reference. Now you can put in specific app IDs because I'm referring to their uh, destination addresses. I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to learn what traffic uh, Microsoft actually generates on my network. I might change this to an any later for the, the destination port, but I'm gonna leave it at app default now because I really just wanna test how accurate my auto tagging is by saying any app it has to be on a default port. I will allow it uh, because of the safeguards I put in around that tagging. It's only you know, in the US uh, and it's only for low risk URLs that are Microsoft.com. And I click OK, right? So now I've got this rule created and then I can just wait or commit it, right? And then wait and see uh, over here on the right where you've got the apps scene, give it some time and then let the firewall tell you, hey, I saw this, 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 this app. If that seems to encompass the type of traffic that you're really worried about, then you know check this top box and then add to this rule and then that any goes away. All right, so I hope this helps you when you're dealing with types of traffic uh, that doesn't always have a URL in uh, you know, the, the session or early enough in the session and the vendor that you're trying to you know, identify the traffic for is only giving you a URL instead of a list of IPs, etc. This is an approach that will hopefully help. It is derived from the logs. So the initial access attempt will probably fail or could fail. I just realized I didn't type this correctly, so I'll fix that. Um, will probably fail and that's what generates the URL filtering log. Or it might match a different rule, but the log gets created, the destination address gets tagged, that then matches in the dynamic address group, and then the next time traffic attempts to go the same way, that destination address is already in the DAG and should match the intended rule. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for your time.